Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to sculpt a miniature desk and its chair. I decided to work in, a, in an odd scale. It's 1 to 33. And you will understand maybe later because I am making a tiny student room. And so I decided that the scale would fit the box that I used. So to find the right size in miniature, you simply divide the real size by 33 and you get your size in miniature. So that's basic math and scales. <laughs> But I thought I, I, did, I did need to explain that quickly. So for the desk, I used some, some wood. I have some leftover wood at home that I got at miniature fairs, but you can also get them in local craft stores. I tend to, I would suggest to see the wood in real and not buy it online, simply because veneers of the wood um, can be tricky to, to get right. Since you are going to work in miniature, you don't want to look too odd. And so here I'm simply cutting the tabletop of the desk. And now I'm using some white cardboard to make the drawers that are also going to be the legs of the desk. So um, I'm simply going to make a three-part drawer and then paint the drawer on a uh, fourth panel and glue it on top. So here I'm just checking the size from the desk. I always do that because it's, it's easier. I, I, f I think eyeballing the distance often works best when you work in miniature. So this is what I'm doing. And as you can see here, I'm cutting four uh, of the bigger ones, since they're going to be two drawer legs. And then I'm going to make two smaller for, for the back. So it's a fairly simple process, um, nothing too fancy. Also, I, I apologize for my voice. I sound still a bit sick. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, it's the end of the thickness. Of the sickness, not the thickness. <laughs> That's something else. Um, I just, I had an awful cold, cold. Sorry. I had an awful cold. And last Saturday, I basically slept the entire day while wheezing and coughing and sneezing. And it, it was awful. <laughs> it, it was pathetic, really. But then usually when, when you are a bit sick, it's not pretty to see. But um, I mean, I'm better now. I can sleep normally again. So in here I'm cutting the third part of the drawer legs. The one that is going to be behind. <clears throat> So I'm just checking if it's nice. And I used some um, Lego bricks. I always have Lego bricks um, left from my childhood. Actually, those Lego bricks are my boyfriend's ones, but <laughs> details. <laughs> and I use them to have a perfect angle, um, a right angle. Do you say right angle in English as well? I suppose you do. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then glue the other side. Um, always using the Lego bricks to get it straight, which is so easy. I'm sure you have some Lego bricks lying around in your house somewhere. I, I think most people do keep them, at least for their kids. And maybe you're still a kid and then you, you have your own Lego bricks. And then I'm kind of jealous. It was, <laughs> it was a great game. And here I'm using a much thinner, um, it's not cardboard, it's more of a thick paper, uh, Bristol paper. And I'm just cutting the right size to fit um, up front, so where the drawers are going to be. And now I am using a very fine liner, so it's uh, is the... Is the it's a zero, sorry, it's a 0 0.05. It was the smallest liner I had at home, so I went with that. And I simply drew the drawers on top of it. So I had an inspiration. The inspiration is an IKEA desk. I don't remember the name and I didn't write it down, but you you should be able to find it on IKEA if 
if you really need to. Uh, it's a very simple drawer, so it's nothing too fancy. Here I'm measuring so they are straight. Um, I honestly I eyeballed it, so I don't know if there are as many drawers on mine than on IKEA. It was really just the reference picture and then I pretty much just went with it. Another option, if you have a very good printer, is to print this out. However, printers, um, most of them, have quite some difficulties to get very thin lines. So I think it's um, sometimes easier to draw them. And it's so easy to draw this that it just doesn't make much sense to bother with making them. On the computer and then simply glue and you have your tiny drawer leg and the desk the tabletop on tabletop and so obviously I made a second one I didn't record that because it's the same technique so no point in doing that and I glued them I always use um, wood glue and now I'm making the chair. So for the chair I simply use the desk for size reference and I cut out the shape. It's an Anna Jacobsen chair. We actually have those at home. We found them. Um, we thrifted them and they were really cheap, the one we found. So they're not new and anything, but they're really comfortable. And I really like the shape. And it's it's basically a sort of eight shape and you simply fold it and then bake it. So it's a very easy chair to, to make. And then after baking and cooling off, I sanded all the, the edges to smooth them out. Chairs usually don't have a hard edges, it's more rounded. Also, I made the base um, a kind of beige ochre because originally I what I had in mind was to paint it all in black, which I'm going to do, but then scratch it uh, to show the, the wooden surface that is underneath because it's what we have at home and I, I think it looks really pretty. But I ended up not doing it, so I don't know. You could basically make it in black, although I think it looks good when it's painted somehow. And here I'm making the legs. So for that I'm using stainless steel wire and I am folding it. Uh, as you can see, in I'm making two I am making two that are the same size. I'm cutting the legs so the legs are also the same size just in a bit. <coughs> And I'm going to add them here, yeah. So I added some clay. Um, I added some clay to make the junction between the chair and the legs. So I used some black clay because I knew I wanted the chair to be black. Now if you want a red chair, it might be good to use some red clay because then Although it doesn't really matter if you paint everything at the end, because you still can paint that. So I'm just placing it. As you saw, I cut uh, one of the the leg duo in two, so they are at the same height. And now I'm removing the excess clay, so it's not too bulky. I'm using um, an exacto knife for that, but any blade will do. So whatever you have at home is perfect for that. Just making it a little bit more nifty, so to speak, a bit a bit more clear, so it doesn't look too shabby. We don't want a chair, uh, shabby chair, shabby chair. Sorry. <laughs> and here I'm just covering it with clay again, so I am sure that the metal is going to stay into place. And simply smoothing everything out. So it's it's a fairly simple process. Of course, you need to be a little bit careful and have a bit of patience. It's not, um, but it's not too difficult. And I baked it. And after baking, as I said, I painted it black. 
Um, I'm just going to say it again in case you are arriving now. Um, I, I painted it black because the original idea was to scratch the paint off so you can see the wood underneath. Winted, vintage chairs usually are a bit scratched and that was the look I was going for originally but once I was done with my tiny chair I didn't really want to do that anymore so I left it like that. However, um, I think I might still do it that way because when you paint it you see the paint's strike strokes I don't know um, and that that looks really is that looks very realistic because those chairs you often see uh, yeah you kind of see that it's painted and that it's not just a black chair so I think it looks really nice I added two coats of black acrylic paint uh, of course, I let it dry between the two coats and that's pretty much it. You can varnish it at the end if you want it really, really shiny. And yeah. Oh, ah, and almost forgot. I also added some, um, some dots of black paint on the legs. So obviously I waited for it to dry before, before this and I'm simply adding some, some bits of uh, black paint because usually it's rubbery yeah and we are done so I really hope you enjoyed this video it's a uh, it's a fairly simple tutorial but it's it's so effective I think this chair is so easy to make and yet it looks so cool I really like this chair so if you liked it uh, please give it a thumbs up maybe subscribe also, this video is part of a series of videos of a student room, so stay tuned to see me sculpting the tiny bed and creating and arranging the whole room. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!